Well, good evening, everyone. A very Merry Christmas to you. Okay, I have to make an, uh, uh, basically an apology or basically a confession, and that is I was a man of little faith. I only made 50 bulletins, and there are a few more than 50 people here tonight. So is there anyone that could give up a bulletin to some that don't have it? Look at that. Look, what's that? We'll see him on Sunday, too. We'll see him on Sunday, too. That's right. Thanks, Mort. Okay, so if... Yeah, anybody... Sorry about that. I, thank you for coming. You didn't tell me you were coming. That's the thing. <laughs> but we're glad that you're here. How many have never been to a service at Tamiami Village before? Raise your hand. Okay, welcome, welcome. How many... Is this the first time you've been here this winter, this fall? All right. Wow, okay. And how many have been here more than 50 times? Raise your hand. <laughs> Good. All right, so we're going to follow the order in the service. Uh, we have several special numbers today. Uh, we have uh, some readings. Chuck's going to do a reading, and then we're going to do a responsive reading from the hymnal. So you'll need to see that. And you may need the words to the songs. We are singing pretty much traditional Christmas carols. And if you know them by heart, then sing them from your heart. If you don't, then look at the words and rejoice with us as we celebrate. This is really the celebration of the birth of Jesus Christ. It is his birthday that we recognize, and it's a wonderful time for us to come together. So I'm glad that you're here together with us today. And let's rejoice in Jesus Christ and exalt him. And the chorus goes like this. Oh, come, let us adore him. Christ the Lord. So let's do that today. Um, we're going to start then by having Dave and Colleen come and they're going to light the Advent wreath for us. During this Advent season, we have been thinking about how Christ came as a baby in Bethlehem and anticipating his return to earth as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Tonight at this Christmas Eve service, we will light all four of the Advent candles, as well as the white candle in the middle. That candle is called the Christ candle and represents the coming of Jesus Christ into the world. Listen to the words of the Gospel writers about the birth of Jesus. Matthew 1, 21. And she shall bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus for he will save his people from their sins. Luke 2, 10 and 11. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. John 1, 14. And the word became flesh and dealt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Let us pray. Dear Father in heaven, this is a night of rejoicing for us. Your son came to us in Bethlehem, and you announced his birth to the shepherds, and the angels proclaimed, Glory to God in the highest. We give you thanks for sending your Son in order that we might be saved from our sins. We rejoice at his birth like the shepherds did when they found it just as the angel had told them. The good news strengthens our hearts. Let us experience again the wonder of the Jesus' birth and live in the grace that you give us every day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Dave and Colleen. The first hymn we're going to sing, the first carol, is probably one you know by heart. But if you don't know it, it's in our hymnal number 52. Number 52. And if you could today, if you're able to, would you stand together? We're going to sing the verses of this great carol, Joy to the World.
greet two or three other people and wish them happy uh, Merry Christmas. Dan? Dan, yeah, Merry and Christmas. Who's that? Andy Burke is a Joanne, nice to have you here. Yeah, great to be here. Here. Yeah, thank you. Sorry, we pulled into the. Uh, we pulled into the. What is it called? Windmill Village. And I was oh like, this God. isn't wrong. So we waited for like a ton of traffic. Okay. Nice to have you. Here. The reading tonight is from Matthew. It's the first account we have in the Bible of. Uh, Blessed Savior's birth. And we start off with Matthew 1, 18 through 25. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, before they became together, she was found to be of, with child of the Holy Ghost. But Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not wanting to make any public example, was minded to put her away in secretly. But while he thought about this, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you Mary, your wife, for that which is, in, is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And she being with, and she, will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. So this is all done, that it might be fulfilled, that which was spoken of by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated, God with us. Then Joseph, being aroused from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord commanded him, and took him his wife. And they did, and did not know her until she brought forth her firstborn son, and they called his name Jesus. Hallelujah. End of the reading.
I invite you to turn again to the second carol. It's a well-known one, number 59, Hark the Herald Angels Sing, and we'll sing all the verses of this carol. Number 59. great singing. It's like you had sung that one before or something. All right? Praise God. Now you have to turn to the back of your hymnal. The very back is, we're going to read one of the responsive readings there. It is on page 638. Page 638, the reading number is number 665, entitled, The Savior's Birth. I'll read the, the bold print, and you can respond together in the fine print. Number 665, page 638, the Savior's birth. Let's read it together. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when And all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. Of the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was the house and the nation of David. 
To be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and let clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over the flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came on upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you the tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in the manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to the will of men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which is come to pass which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste, and the Lord Joseph, and the babe were in the And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things, and pondered them in her heart. God bless the reading of his word and the story of the birth of Jesus. Tom Mason is going to come and sing for us. Yes,
to God in the highest. Oh, come, let us adore Him. Oh, come, let us adore Him. Happy morning, O oh, Jesus, to Thee be all glory given. Word of the Father, now in flesh appearing, O oh, come let us adore Him. God. I'd never heard those two verses that Tom sang tonight. Great. They're in the hymnal. I just never sung them before. That's great. We are going to sing another hymn. Thanks, Tom, for letting us sing the chorus. That's a great chorus to sing together. We're going to sing number 72 in the hymnal. What child is this? I want you to, before we sing this, I just want to make a comment. I'm not going to preach on this hymn, but I want you to note the words from the first verse to the second verse. So read them with me before we sing them. It's a question that's asked, what child is this that who laid to rest on Mary's lap is sleeping? Whom angels greet with anthems sweet while shepherds watch are keeping? This, this is Christ the King, whom shepherds guard and angels sing. Haste, haste to bring him laud, the babe, the son of Mary. But listen to the second verse now. Why lies he in such mean estate where ox and ass are feeding? Good Christian fear for sinners here, the silent word is pleading. Now listen to these words. Nails, spear, shall pierce him through. The cross be born for me, for you. Hail, hail, the word made flesh, the babe, the son of Mary. You notice how Christmas and Easter are tied together, actually Christmas and Good Friday, because Christ didn't just come as a babe, he came with the cross in mind. And it says there, nails, spear, shall pierce him through. So we celebrate his birth today, tonight, but we also celebrate everything he came to do, which especially was to die for our sins. So let's sing the three verses of his song together. Thank you. 
If you have your Bibles, I invite you to turn with me uh, back to the passage there in Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2, I'm just going to read uh, some of the verses of the birth of Jesus. It's specifically about the angel speaking to the shepherds and then uh, what happens at the end of his little speech. It's Luke 2 verses 8 through 14. Here's what it says. Now, there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be the sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling cloths, lying in a manger, and suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you today for the privilege of being together. We thank you for your word, and we pray, Lord God, that you would bless this word to our hearts tonight. We thank you that we can celebrate your birth, and we pray your blessing as we consider what the text says and what you have said about your son. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. As I begin tonight, I need to tell a little story that happened on the way to our service this evening. And that was one of my daughters, namely Abigail, said, Dad, I can tell you what you're going to preach on tonight. And she gave me the cliff notes to my message before I even have given anything in it. So Abby, you get to check to see if the cliff notes are right. And if you're uncertain about what I spoke on, talk to Abigail after the service. You can find out the short version. Don't do that, she says. Don't do that to me, Dad. <laughs> All right. Have you ever run into someone and someone said to you, hey, what's the big deal? What's the big deal going on here? I think there's a big deal going on here tonight. It's the celebration of the birth of the Son of God. Now, I, at the risk of embarrassing any of my children, I just happened to go through some keepsakes before I came here tonight, and this is uh, an announcement of a birth of one of our children. And you can't see that. You, Beth, you know who that is? Caleb. It is Caleb, right? Caleb happens to be with us. He's the oldest of our children with us tonight. It says here, Pastor John and Beth Blick said we're blessed with the addition of Caleb, Josh, Winder, their family on June 3rd and then gives how much he weighed. If you want to find out, you can read this afterward, Caleb, okay? All right. But that's a picture of when he was born. Uh, we had the opportunity of doing that 12 times. You know we have 12 children. So we had 12 announcements. You know, today the big deal is, isn't the announcement of the birth of a child. You know what the big deal in our society is? It's gender reveal. You know, they, they have these big whatever they do, and then they find out if it turns blue or pink. The cool wildfires? Yeah, someone said a wildfire, I think, because they wanted to do a, a gender reveal. But you know what? It is a big deal tonight. It is a big deal tonight that we celebrate. And I would like to think about for a few minutes about how God told us about his son. And this wasn't just a New Testament idea. It was seen in the Old Testament as well. And I'm going to read some passages of Scripture. If you ever read Psalm chapter 2, Psalm chapter 2 is about the, the enemies of God uh, coming against the Lord and against His anointed one. And in Psalm 2, verses 6 and 7, um, the Lord says, As for me, I have set my king on Zion, my holy hill. And then it's, a, it's really the Lord Jesus speaking in the Old Testament. He says, I will tell the decree of the Lord. The Lord said to me, you are my son. Today I have begotten you. So even before Jesus came to earth, God the Father had begotten his son in way time before Jesus ever came to this earth. 
In Proverbs chapter 30, verse 4, the writer says this, Who has ascended into heaven and come down? Who has gathered the wind in his fists? Who has wrapped up the waters in a garment? Who has established all the ends of the earth? What is his name and what is his son's name? Surely you know. Now we know, don't we? Today. We read in the text of scripture that Chuck read to us, the angel told Joseph, you shall call his name what? Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. If we read the account in the book of Luke when the angel Gabriel came to Mary, he told Mary, you shall call his name Jesus. We know his name today. At different times during the life of Jesus Christ, God the Father was pleased with his son. Now the first time we see it, and I'm going to get back to this text, but the first time we see it in the, in the adult life of Jesus is when Jesus is baptized. In Matthew chapter 3, verse 16 and following, it says, And when Jesus was baptized, immediately he came up from the water, and behold, the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and coming to rest on him. And behold, a voice from heaven said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. God the Father put his stamp of approval on the baptism of Jesus, and he told the world, those that heard it, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Later on in the ministry of Jesus Christ, uh, Jesus said there's going to be some that, that don't see death until they see the glory of God. And he was specifically speaking of Peter, James, and John. And in the 17th chapter of Matthew, we have recorded for us what's called the transfiguration, where Jesus went up to the mountain and his he was seen in all his glory. The Bible says it was whiter than any launder could make it, his, his, his clothing. And Peter said during that time, Lord, it is good that we are here. If you wish, we will make three tents, one for you and one for Moses and one for Elijah. They were with Jesus on the mountain. He was still speaking when, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and a voice from the cloud said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. And so we see at different times in the life of Jesus Christ that God the Father was pleased with the ministry of Jesus Christ. Now let's go back to the text. The text here is kind of a unique because we see that Jesus Christ, we know he was born in Bethlehem, a very insignificant place, but when he comes into the world, God can't help but want to announce the birth of his son. So what does he do? He goes out into the fields and he has an angel speak to the shepherds. And he tells the shepherds, don't be afraid. I have great news, good news of great joy. Unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior is Christ the Lord. And the sign's going to be, you're going to go find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. Now, if we read on in that text, we find out, guess what? They go to the place, they find the babe, they know it's him, and they rejoice. But there's one little aspect that I've left out so far, and that is after the angel told them that Jesus was born and the sign they would see, then the Bible says, and suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying. Now, before I tell you what they say, you already know what they say. But the Bible says, a multitude of the heavenly host. And if you look in the Old Testament, you know who the host were? It wasn't a choir. Not like the choir that, you know, that we had with the Tappans and all those people. It wasn't an ensemble. It was a heavenly, heavenly host in the Old Testament were armies. Armies. So God sent this huge army. I don't know how good they sounded. I don't know if they sang in harmony or we don't know. In fact, it doesn't even say that they sang. We sing it, but it says they said it. This army of God, the heavenly host, the, the, the sky was filled with their presence, and all of a sudden they said, Glory to God 
in the highest. And on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. It was as if God were saying the same things he had said at the baptism of Jesus and at the transfiguration of Jesus. This is my son. My son has come into the world and I'm well pleased to announce his birth. Glory to God in the highest. The Bible says in the next verse, so it was while the angels had gone away from them into heaven that the shepherds went. They went to where... They had been told to go. So just as soon, just as quickly as the angels had filled the sky, suddenly it was gone. I don't know about you. I'm, I'm a lover of sunsets. But you know what? If you don't watch a sunset soon enough, it goes away. Have you ever noticed that? It's there for a minute. And you look again and it's gone. And here in this story, we see the angels were there for that brief moment. And the shepherds got to experience this wonderful heavenly host praising God. And God, for a brief moment, said to the world, My son has arrived. There's one other passage of scripture I'd like to turn to. You don't have to turn there, but it, it, it's, it's in the book of Romans. And in the first chapter, the Apostle Paul is giving his introduction. Just let me read the first four verses of Romans chapter 1. Paul says this, Paul, a bondservant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated to the gospel of God, which he promised before through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, concerning his son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who was born of the seed of David according to the flesh. Paul is recognizing that the stories that Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John tell are true of the, the life of Jesus Christ, that he was the son of David. He was born of the seed of David. He was rightful uh, heir to the throne of David. But then he says this. Let me read the verse 3 again. Concerning his son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who was born of the seed of David according to the flesh and declared to be the son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. I'm not sure if you caught that or not. Let me read verse 4 again. And he was declared to be the Son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. Now what I've tried to say tonight is this, that it was a big deal that God had his son come that night in Bethlehem. It was a big deal to God that Jesus was baptized and he announced his pleasure with that. It was a big deal that Jesus Christ was shown on the Mount of Transfiguration to be his son in glory. But the biggest deal, my friends, was this. That Jesus Christ died on the cross. Jesus Christ fulfilled all all of what God desired in his son. Jesus did everything his father asked him to do to the most perfect degree. He had perfect righteousness and then he died as a sacrifice for sin. And do you know how we know that it was accepted by God? God raised him from the dead. God raised him from the dead. Let me read the verse again. He, Jesus was declared to be the Son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. So my friends, we come tonight on Christmas Eve to celebrate the birthday of Jesus, but Christmas is inextricably tied to Good Friday and to Easter Sunday. Because all that God wanted to accomplish in his son was done through Jesus Christ, perfect obedience and his sacrificial death for us. And then God said, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. I'm going to raise him from the dead. And God put his stamp of approval on all that Jesus did. We can be thankful tonight, my friends, first and foremost, that Jesus Christ 
came to this earth, that he became a man and was one of us, and that he died on the cross, and that his sacrifice was acceptable to God, and God put his stamp of approval by raising him from the dead. And we can live and move and have our being in what Jesus Christ has done for us when we simply accept it as our own. What Jesus Christ has done in living and dying and rising again from the dead can be ours simply by faith in him. The Bible says in the book of John, he came unto his own. Jesus came unto his own, and those who were his own did not receive him. But as many as received him, to them who believed in his name, he gave the right to be called the children of God. So, my friends, it's a big deal what God has to say about his son. And it's a big deal that God wants each and every one of us to be his sons and daughters through faith in Jesus Christ. My prayer for you today, each and every one of you, is that you have come to know Jesus Christ as your own Savior and Lord. So just as the angel pronounced to the shepherds, there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Now as I close, I want to tell a historical story it's a great story. It happened during, uh, purported to happen during the Civil War. It was in 1864, and it was during the Battle of Petersburg. And the Union forces were going up against the, the South. Uh, the Southern general there was George Pickett. And what happened was going on is Pickett's men were being besieged by the Union Army. And then one night, all of a sudden, uh, Across the way, on the south, the, the Confederate side, all of a sudden, all of these bonfires were being lit. And it alarmed uh, Ulysses S. Grant, the, the, the general of the Union Army. It alarmed him. He thought, what's going on here? Why are all these bonfires going on? And so he sent out a scout to find out what was going on. And they went across the way, and they said, they found out that George Pickett's wife had given birth to a son. And all of the men in the, on the southern side were celebrating the birth of George Pickett's son. And when Grant found out about it, he said, What? Don't we have any wood on this side that we can celebrate too? And so he, he announced, We're going to cease from hostilities now. We're going to build bonfires. Let's rejoice in the birth of this boy. You see, all the hostilities... They stopped, and they celebrated the birth of a little boy. My friends, we can celebrate the fact that a little boy was born 2,000 years ago. And because of what he has done, the hostilities between God and us can cease. And we can have peace with God. And there can be peace on earth because there's peace in our hearts. Let's rejoice tonight in God's big deal because God the Father was pleased that his son came and that his son died and that he rose again. Amen. Amen. All right. We're going to have Joyce come up. Now, I'm going to give you special directions here. Joyce is going to come and sing a solo. She's going to play through one time the song Silent Night. And then she's going to sing the first verse by herself. And we're going to join her on the second verse. The second verse is uh, listed there in your bulletin if you have it. If you don't have it, you can look it up in the book too. But uh, let's sing. We'll sing. We'll listen to Joyce and then we'll sing with her.
distant mother and child. Holy infant so tender and mild. Sleep in heavenly peace. Sleep in heavenly peace. Silent night, holy night, shepherds quake at the sight. Glory streams from heaven afar, heavenly hosts sing Thank you, Joyce. All right, this is going to be now our candle lighting portion of the service. Did everybody get a candle? Is there anyone who didn't get a candle? All right, so here's how it's going to work. Um, in just a few moments, Sharon and Angie are going to come up and they're going to light their candles from the Christ candle. And then they're going to come down the center aisle and light the person's uh, candle that's on the, the, the aisle edge here. Uh, please note that when you are lighting, if you have a candle that's lit, don't tip yours. Have the other person tip theirs. It's called wax, right? You don't want wax on you. So if you have a candle that's already lit, hold it straight, and the person next to you will light theirs from yours. Okay? So we're, so we're going to do two things. Uh, first of all, um, Judy's going to play. Uh, this song is entitled Emmanuel. She's going to play an interlude during that time. And once she is done, uh, then Richard Phillips is going to come and sing Mary Did You Know. And we'll have that during the candlelight. So here we go. You guys want me to knock the light? Praise the Lord. Amen. You ought to see it from here. It's beautiful. All right. 
praise the Lord. your baby boy would one day walk on water Mary did you know that your baby boy would save your sons and daughters did you know that your baby boy has come to make you new this child that you Jesus said, I am the light of the world. I am the light of the world. And he who believes in me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this time together. We thank you for the privilege of being together to celebrate your birth. And we rejoice in you, the light of the world. We, re we rejoice in you, the Son of the Father. And we thank you for all you've done for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, I think you can extinguish your candles now. The wax is free to take home if you like. <laughs> all right, we want to uh, announce that after the service today, you are all invited to join us afterwards for a time of fellowship. 
uh, Cookie Fellowship. Sharon, you want to say something about that? Uh, only that you don't have to put the chairs away. <laughs> all right. We can let all the chairs up. We don't have to sanitize them. We can all stay up because they're going to have Christmas dinner tomorrow. And I'd also like to say one thing. Uh, the congregation has a little something for the oh. Passover's family. Okay. Mm -hmm. We'd like to wish you a very Merry Christmas. Oh, thank and you. And a Happy New Year to all of you. Thank there you. you thank You're you. Welcome. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. So let's stand together, receive the benediction, and we'll be dismissed. And please share, join us afterwards for our coffee fellowship. Uh, we'd love to have you. A blessed and a Merry Christmas to each and every one of you. Receive the benediction. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. God, God bless you and go in peace.